This is one module in a 21-part series that the York Group has developed to provide guidance on key elements of the cloud business model, and I would encourage you to spend time going through the rest of the series. Churn has a corrosive effect on your revenues, eating away at the base of your monthly recurring revenues. Churn is a very common term in the telecoms business, but not always understood by on-premise software companies. Simply put, the churn rate is the percentage of clients that sign up for a subscription and that stop paying, for whatever reason whether they went to a competitive product or simply didn't find a compelling need for this type of solution. There are a number of ways of measuring churn, but in its most basic form, it is the inverse of your renewal rate. If 97% of your clients renew their subscriptions, then the churn rate is 3%. But as I just said, there are different ways of measuring it. The most common is the loss of monthly revenues, which takes the amount of the subscriptions into considerations. Bookings are the total contract values. For example, a 12-month contract for $1,000 per month is $1,000 in monthly recurring revenues, but $12,000 in bookings. And some companies will also look at the customer count instead of, or in addition to, monthly recurring revenues. The customer count doesn't factor in the revenues, so it does offer some extra insight. Let's take an extreme example where there's one client producing $100,000 in monthly revenues and 100 clients producing $1,000 each. If 20 of the smaller clients leave you, you would have a churn rate of 20% in your customer base, but only 10% in your monthly recurring revenues. This is a chart from David Scott, a partner with Matrix Partners, one of the leading venture capital firms specializing in SaaS. In this model, he shows a net revenue loss from a 2.5% and a 5% churn rate, respectively. The assumption is that you start the year with $10,000 in bookings and that you add $2,000 in new bookings every month over a five-year period. With a monthly churn rate of 5%, at the end of five years you would have lost $90,000 in monthly recurring revenues, revenues you would still have if your churn rate was zero. Not only is that almost a million dollars in annualized revenue loss, but on a monthly basis it offsets new bookings. So you can see how damaging churn rates can be. A study done by the Customer Success Association, a trade group specializing in customer support and retention, indicated that the top four reasons clients leave are the following. First, they don't see the value of the solution, at least not enough to justify continuing to pay for it. Second, they're not happy with the vendor. This is something that I've experienced many times, signing up for a great looking technology, but not getting enough support from the vendor during the onboarding to actually make it work. And there are a lot of clients who sign up but never get around to using it, or using enough of it to make it worthwhile. It's not that the product doesn't have enough functionality, it's just that they don't see it. The fourth most common reason for terminating a subscription is financial. The client's business isn't doing well, and they get rid of all non-essential spending. So how can you lower your churn rate? We will look at two different approaches, the carrot and the stick. The most effective way to keep clients from leaving is to split the sales role into hunters and farmers. Farmers are often called customer success managers. It is their job to maintain communications, make sure the client is using as much of the product functionality as possible, upsell additional functionality, in general, keep them happy so that they renew. One of the nice things about true SaaS solutions as opposed to hosted or VM versions of a non-premise software is that you can actually measure how much of the product your clients are using where they're running into trouble, or the functionality they never use. By measuring how much they use the product, you can get early warning signals on those that are most likely to leave. An extension of this is to really understand the functionality that makes people stay. What are the features they fall in love with and can't live without? Now, you can actually have a negative churn rate if you sell more to existing customers. Squeezing out more revenue dollars from an existing relationship can more than offset the revenue loss from churn. Traditionally, customer support has been seen as a cost center, something to be managed and reduced in order to preserve or improve margins. But with SaaS, it is seen as an important part of the client retention strategy, thereby increasing the CLV, or Client Lifetime Value. This is the total revenue that you collect from a client during the entire length of the subscription, so the longer they stay, the better it is for you. 
Based on the metrics that are used by many venture capital investors, if a client leaves in less than three years, there is a high likelihood that a vendor will lose money on that customer because there won't be enough time to recover the customer acquisition costs, provisioning costs, and client support costs. In the SaaS world, keeping a customer can become at least as important as selling to a new customer. Now there is a stick as well. There are punitive ways of keeping a client from moving. A lot of SaaS vendors have moved away from the traditional month to month and are locking clients into contracts of a year or longer. They still advertise the cost per user per month, but they have a minimum duration on the contract. Some vendors make it very difficult to get the data back or to migrate to another application. They force customers to export the data into multiple CSV files, making it almost unusable. Another trick is to require a phone call. A lot of people would gladly cancel a subscription if they could do it online by pressing a button. They want to avoid the confrontation or sales pressure of dealing with someone on the phone. While these techniques are used a lot, and they can be very effective, there is a downside. Customers hate it, and they make their feelings known to others in product reviews, social media, online communities, and so on. Now for most companies, the objective should be to achieve negative churn. What that means is that the increase in revenues per client is greater than the loss from non-renewals. In this chart, you can see the growth in bookings as the negative churn hits 2.5%. There are a number of things that you can do to achieve negative churn, and as we go through them, you will see why it is so important to have farmers that are working the accounts on a regular basis, something hunters are unlikely to do regardless of the compensation structure. One way is to increase customer usage. When you look at businesses like OneDrive, a big part of the strategy is to help you find new ways to use more storage. A lot of products have multiple tiers, going from freemium to silver to gold to platinum. Again, this is where the farmers are invaluable, helping customers justify using more features that will move them into a different tier. Many SaaS companies have a family of products. For example, a lot of ERP vendors have CRM, HR, and other products that they can work hard to upsell to existing clients. The Your Group helps ISVs and services companies that want to expand their cloud business. Our website offers a wide range of resources that you can access at no cost. And if there's anything we can do to help you, feel free to give me a call or send me an email.